Rifles and Reloading, second installment of Quick Tips and Saving Money. Well, I, I guess you could only get this knife sharpener joke if you've seen the first installment of Quick Tips and Saving Money. And now you know how many times I've ordered from Midway USA this year. And you're, you're probably asking what the heck I do with all these knife sharpeners. Well, at the end of the year, for Christmas, they make excellent stocking stuffers. Anyway, let's get this going. So let me show you a couple apps that I like to use to make sure I'm not wasting reloaded ammunition at 300 yards and beyond. Now before I get into Ballistics AE, let me show you a free app simply called Elevation. Now this is pretty simple. You just find the area approximately where you're shooting Touch get elevation if you want it in feet or meters. It really is pretty simple. And before I take off, while I still have Wi Fi connection at my house, I'll just quick get this information so I can plug it in to the Ballistics AE program. So I highly suggest downloading this app called Ballistics AE. Now, it's not free, you do have to pay for it but it's much better than wasting ammunition guessing your scope elevation adjustment at say 600 or 1000 yards. Now if you're a veteran reloader or rifleman, I'm sure you're well aware of this downloadable app. But if you're new to the game, I'm doing this more to make you aware of this application. And it's probably one of the most premier software programs for calculating your bolt's trajectory, rather than just slinging lead down range and trying to get bolt holes on paper. Now I'm not gonna go in depth on this software app. Seriously, if I did, it'd be a 30 minute video all in itself. And there's already a hundred YouTube videos explaining how to use this very software. But if you're new, especially if you don't own a chronograph, let me give you some quick tips. Now probably one of the most important variables that you can possibly enter in this software is the muzzle velocity. Now obviously the best way to get your muzzle velocity is with a chronograph. But if you simply can't afford one, or you're just starting out with reloading, or you just purchased your rifle or scope or mount, let me show you some quick tips to at least get you relatively on paper so you're not wasting all that expensive ammunition, especially past 300 yards. Now before we get into muzzle velocity, one of the other important variables is sight height. And let me show you how to measure that. Now your sight height is simply the center of your bore to the center of your scope. And it's somewhat important to make sure this is marginally accurate or your output on the Ballistics AE program will not be correct. And an easy way that I found is to use calipers and measure from the firing pin to the middle of your scope ring. And in this case, it's approximately about 2.65 inches. Now, like I said before, the best way to do this is use a chronograph and base the muzzle velocity on the loads that you particularly developed for your rifle. First and foremost, let's set the range increments at 100 yards. So for pure example sake, say you're new, you do not own a chronograph, but your buddy invites you to go to say 600 yards and you both have never shot at 600 yards before, and you have a 6.5 Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle. And you have absolutely no idea what to adjust your scope elevation to. 
and you purchased some 140 grain AMAX factory ammunition, let me show you what you can do, at least to get relatively close on paper. So your new rifle is zeroed at 100 yards. What you can do is click on the ballistics coefficient and you can actually go to the preset loads. Go to 6.5 Creedmoor. And they actually have a section on here that's already preset for 140 grain AMAX match bullets. Now you can see all the default values have changed over. Your bullet diameter is correct for 6.5 Creedmoor. Bullet diameter is actually 0.264 inches. The bullet weight is 140. According to most likely Hornady's uh, factory ammunition, they have their muzzle velocity set at 2820. And we have the correct sight height uh, entered already for 2.65 inches. And you can see at 600 yards, your scope elevation in minutes of angle would be an adjustment of 11.8 minutes of angle. And if you remember correctly from my Ruger Precision Rifle with its Krieger barrel at 600 yard video, I'll take that. Not bad. Right 11 minutes of angle. My adjustment with my 142 SMKs, most likely a little bit hotter load, was exactly 11 minutes of angle, which is not that far off. But something else you can do if you're starting to reload, and you don't own a chronograph yet, you can Use the velocities out of your data books to get reasonably close on paper rather than just guessing. And like I said before, it would be best to use a chronograph and develop your own loads to get the correct muzzle velocity. But if you're in a pinch, you could do this. So for pure example sake, say like you're using H4350 with a 140 grain AMAX bullet and you're pushing the realms of your max powder drop say, I don't know, 41 grains, and you're between roughly 2650 and 2700 feet per second at the muzzle. And you can see just by lowering the muzzle velocity by 120 feet per second that it's increased the minutes of angle adjustment at 600 yards by damn near two minutes of angle. Now is this completely correct? Absolutely not. But if you want to get a general idea of how much to adjust your scope for 600 yards in this example, this is probably way off. It's probably not 13 and a half minutes. It's probably more like 12 but at least gives you an idea of where to start. So if you have the money to spare, get that chronograph, nail down that muzzle velocity for the load that you developed, pick the bullet that you're using, enter in your correct uh, information, such as your zero range, your sight height, also your current and zero atmospheres, for example, temperature and elevation, and there's numerous other things that you can dive into in this program to really hone down these numbers. And you'll be amazed once you can confirm, say, your minutes of angle adjustment at 600 yards and you move to 1000, it's pretty much spot on. So look in the description box below for another YouTube link going even further down the rabbit hole detailing this software program even further. Enough said. Stop wasting money on ammunition, and let's move on to the next subject. Now, if you're starting out, to be honest with you, ammo trays are actually pretty inexpensive. Well, when you have a press to purchase, maybe even a charge master, a stainless steel tumbler, fighting for every last dollar can be a struggle. 
Now what I did when I first started out, and I actually still use these to this very day. These are actually the tray inserts for factory pistol ammunition. I actually dug these out of the garbage can at my local range and they work perfect. For 308, 6.5, 243, 223, you name it. I didn't pay a dime for these. And this came out of a factory box of 45 ACP and nine millimeter pistol ammunition. Now I highly advise getting a torque wrench, especially for mounting scopes. Now if you want something entry level, say like you're mounting a Vortex PST scope, or maybe even a Burris XTR2, I think something like a Fat Max wrench is plenty fine. I've actually have used mine for over two years now and have mounted numerous scopes without an issue. And I got mine off of Amazon.com, on sale, shipped for $38. Before the shipping went to $49, but that was two years ago. But that said, I see them on Amazon quite a bit for the high 30s. You can also check slickguns.com for other websites. I've seen them as low as $32. Now, if you're mounting something more like a Night Force or a Vortex Razor Scope, it leads me to believe that you have the money for better. You might want to look into something more like a Borka uh, torque wrench rather than a Fat Max. But for me personally, this has worked just fine. So if you're completely new to the game and you're not familiar with these next two websites, you really should. It really is all about buying low and selling high. And to make this a quick analogy, gunbroker.com is the eBay of the gun world. And if you watched my videos before, especially like the one with the Rock River Arms 20 inch varmint bull barrel that has the new TRO top rail octagon handguard on it. Well, that's what I call it. Bug hole. Hell yeah. That's where I purchased it, right here on gunbroker.com for $999. So if you're completely new to this website, for pure example sake, say like we were searching for a Rock River Arms Varmint Bull Barrel AR. Personally, what I like to do is click off the used and new old stock. We'll research it. I'll click on the semi-auto rifles. Personally, I like to do the buy now. You can see they actually have some of the old Rock River Arm Varmint Bull Barrels uh, AR rifles on here for under a thousand bucks. Um, I see they have actually an 18, 18 inch Varmint Bull Barrel that has the new TRO handguard for under 1100. It's actually not a bad price, but you need to pay close attention not only their rating, but also the amount of shipping the way you need to pay. And most places on here have a 3% discount for a cashier's check if you pay with a credit card. Now, when I paid for mine, it didn't have a 3% discount. Some places will actually waive that. And I actually got mine out the door shipped for $1,025. Now you're not done yet. You simply can't have this shipped to your house. It needs to be shipped to an FFL. And most communities usually have a reputable FFL dealer that this can be shipped to. And I would say on average, most FFLs charge, I would say 20 to $25 to receive your rifle. And it's at that point, your FFL dealer, before he hands you this rifle, he does the background check. You simply just cannot walk away with it. You will do the background check, and if you fail it, you will not get the rifle. And those that say it's so easy to just purchase firearms online and just walk away with them are complete and totally full of yeah. <laughs> So, uh, it's literally no different than if you were to go to your local Gander Mountain 
or Shields or Cabela's, which they are also FFLs, and they sell you a rifle direct, right off the shelf. Absolutely no different. Now on the other hand, there's arms lists. So if I had an analogy for it, it'd be like Craigslist for the gun community. Arms list is an amazing resource to buy and sell your firearms locally. And if you're not familiar with these two websites, you really should. If you want to save the most amount of money, this is the route to go. So before I take off here, I just wanted to go over the cost per round for those that are absolutely new to reloading. And actually the math is quite simple. Really the only key you need to know, there's 7,000 grains and one pound of powder. If I'm gonna drop, say for example, 43 grains of powder for 7.62 or 308, that means I'm roughly gonna get 162 total drops of powder. So if I'm paying $26 per pound, and I'm gonna get 162 total drops of powder. That means I'm paying 16 cents per drop. Well, primers per 100 is three bucks. As for bullets, in this example of match 168 grain, it's $27 per 100. Now, for pure example's sake, see like I'm able to purchase some once fired Lake City 7.62 brass offline. I don't know, we'll say 17 cents per piece. But I'm able to reload that, I don't know, we'll say eight times. That means I'm only paying two cents roughly for that piece of brass if I get eight reloads. Now obviously if I get 10, 12, it's going to be next to nothing, especially if it's range pick brass. So in this example, if I'm able to get 8 total reloads out of that one piece of brass that I initially paid 17 cents for, ends up being roughly around 2 cents after I get the 8 reloads. I'm paying 48 cents per round if I get 8 reloads out of that brass. And if it's completely range pick brass, obviously it's 46. So if it's 48 cents per round and for a 20 round box comparison, with 20 rounds of this reloaded ammunition after eight reloads, $9.60. So the general rule of thumb is reloads typically not all the time but is usually half the price a factory well that concludes part two of quick tips and saving money and i hope you found this information useful especially if you're new to the game and if you did do me a favor and subscribe like and share i'll see you next time